What's up YouTube, Redbeard's Garage, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be showing you how to hook up the throttle linkage on a Predator 212 or a GX200 that has the governor removed. Now I got a Honda GX200 up on the workbench. This is a blown up engine that I had just laying around. All of my Predators have already had this um, throttle linkage done to them. So I couldn't show you on none of them. So this will work perfect. The GX200s are exactly the same as the Predator 212. This is going to be the same process. No matter if you have a GX160, a GX200, this is going to be all the same with the Predators as well. So guys, let's not waste any time. Let's jump right on the workbench on that Honda engine and uh, get this throttle linkage made. Okay, so we have this GX200 up on the workbench. This is a blown up engine, but I'm gonna be rebuilding it soon. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how to do that throttle linkage. And this will work for Predators. Any of these six and a half horse clones, this will all be the same. So it doesn't matter that this is a Honda. The first thing we're gonna do is take off the air box. It's got two 10 millimeter nuts on it and then a vacuum line running to then this vacuum line running from the air box to the valve cover. Should pull right out. Now we're gonna be removing this gas tank. There's two 10 millimeter nuts on the rear of it. And there's also a 10 millimeter kind of hidden behind this throttle setup. It's a little bit hard to get to. You need to uh, pull the throttle all the way towards the carburetor and then that'll allow you to access that 10 millimeter. Okay, now we just have this 10 millimeter on this arm that's running to the governor inside the engine. And then we can take a flathead and pry this apart and pull it off that governor arm. Then we'll just unhook this spring and then the, the rod right here going to the, the carburetor butterfly. I'm gonna take a flathead, stick in a little thing to bend it out a little bit. And this should pull right up and out of there. Now we can unhook this throttle rod this is always a little bit tricky and then unhook the return spring right there now we're not going to worry about this in this particular video uh, we're not showing you how to remove the governor we have a video in the description below as well on the screen if you want to go see how to remove the whole entire governor okay now that we got that whole governor arm removed now we can pull the carburetor out and uh, we can get rid of this uh, light spring that's on there. Um, they're pretty much useless after you remove the governor. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this whole, this whole arm out so we can get rid of that spring off there. Now we're gonna be reusing this to delete that governor. So we're gonna also unhook this return spring. I like to keep these because these are a good return spring to use later uh, when you're setting up the throttle. So basically what we have to do is somehow adapt this butterfly sitting down here on the carburetor it's kind of hard to see i'm going to remove this uh, choke arm and maybe you can get a better view so there's the butterfly for the throttle now we need to adapt it up to this arm basically um, this is if you're keeping this stock throttle set up one side of the throttle rod has a 90 bin on it and the other side kind of has a 90 and then another 90 going out. We're gonna need to slide this carburetor out and go ahead and pop this rod back in it so we can get our measurements we need off of it. And then we can slide the carb right back in there. The rod sets under this throttle arm. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to put a bend in this rod about right here, a 90 degree bend and then another 90 to shoot it back out this way. So uh, I'm gonna mark it with a Sharpie and then we'll go jump on the vise and bend this up how we need it. And then we'll come back to the engine and show you how to install it. So make sure your butterfly is all the way closed by pulling the rod towards the rear of the engine. Now I'm gonna mark mine probably about right in here to do my first 90 degree bend. And uh, let's go get that bent. Then we can see how else we need to bend it. Uh, we're gonna wanna bend the end with the the 290 bends in it, we're gonna to wanna to bend it straight up. Okay, so I got that all locked in the vise. I got my ball peen hammer. Now I'm going to uh, tap this to, to get that 90 degree bend in there. Now you can see I got that 90. Let's jump back at the carburetor and we'll see how else we need to bend this. 
So we need to reattach this into that carburetor. You can see that 90 we bend in it sets right before this arm. Now we just need to mark this to bend it at another 90 so it kind of arches up and then arches over top of this little throttle handle. So again, I'm gonna take my Sharpie. I'm gonna to try to keep this as level as I can. We're gonna want it about right there. And now let's go bend this. Now I'm just gonna take two sets of pliers and get this thing bent. It's hard to put, make these smaller bends in a vise. Now you can see the shape we have to this little throttle linkage. Now we can put it once more in the carburetor. Go ahead and slide the carburetor back. And now you can see it sets right above this throttle arm. Now we need to do another couple of bends in it. Now we're gonna bend this rod right here straight at a 90 straight down. And uh, that's gonna allow us to drill a hole in this throttle arm and run that down in there. Now what we're gonna to have to do is after we get that bent, we're gonna to have to also bend this shape into uh, the end of the rod. I'll show you when we get that far in, in the process, but I'm gonna go ahead and bend this rod at a 90 degree straight that way. Again, I'm just using my pliers. You always wanna go under your mark you made when you're using pliers because the bend, you can't get right on the line or the bend's not gonna be, um, gonna be that correct. Now these rods are pretty stiff to bend, so um, make sure you have some good pliers on hand to do this. Now you can see our shape that we have to it. And once more, we're gonna put it back in the carburetor, slide that carb down to place. And you can kind of see that, you know, it's in a bind because of the length, but we need to drill a hole in this arm um, the same diameter as this rod. You don't want it real wobbly in there. So uh, I start with a smaller than I think it is and work my way up just so you won't overboard. It's not really gonna hurt nothing, but it just makes it a lot better throttle feel uh, if you get it the exact diameter that it needs. Now, of course, you wanna try to mark this the best you can. Um, I think mine's gonna be right in this general area. And, and it isn't gonna hurt if you mess up and have to drill another hole in this arm. It's not gonna hurt anything at all. And the more you do this, the faster you'll get at it and the better you'll get. So, you know, don't be afraid to, to do this. Now let's see if that fits. And that fits perfect. The drill bit I used was a 3 30 seconds, and that's about the size you need um, for the diameter of this throttle rod. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna cut some of this piece off. We're not gonna need all of it, but leave as much as you can because when we make this little bend right here, that's a real tedious little bend. It's really hard to do. Um, so we're gonna leave as much as we can so we have more to work with when we're trying to make that bend. Okay, so I actually did have to drill another hole further out on this arm. Um, like I said, you're probably gonna have to do that to find your sweet spot once you get this bent. Uh, I drilled one on back and one on forward and the one forward worked better for me. So now, as you can see, when I push this, the butterfly works perfectly fine. So the last thing we need to do is I need to bend the underside of this rod at another 90 pointing towards the back of the engine so we can hook it and loop it into this throttle arm and it's not gonna pop out while we're riding. And that's the most tedious part. If you remember, it had that bend on the end of it. We're gonna try to replicate that bend uh, in the end of this one. And that's, like I said, that's the most tedious part of this whole thing. So what we're gonna do is kind of mark this underneath so we can see where we need that to, uh, to be at. Now the easiest way to get this throttle rod out is to pull your carb out some and, uh, and then move the, the throttle arm with it and then it'll all slide up out of place. Okay, so I have that bent. It doesn't matter that this is kind of pointing up a little bit because we are gonna be trimming quite a bit of this off. So uh, we'll go ahead and test fit this. First sliding it down through this hole and then latching it into the, the carburetor. Now you can see that's fully closed and that's open. So that's working just as we wanted it to. And now we can just trim some of this ear that we just bent off of that rod and we should be good to go. Now, when we hook up our throttle cable to this, we can either use this throttle hold down here, we can run the throttle cable around the back of the engine, put the, the housing of the throttle cable under this hold down, and then you have some eyelets that's normally up here. This engine's actually missing them, and I don't have a stock um, throttle linkage for, for one of these Predators. I've pretty much gotten rid of all mine. But you're normally gonna have some throttle eyes sitting right here, some throttle cable eyes, 
and you're going to basically put the housing of the throttle cable under this hold down, run the bare cable up under the throttle eye, and basically when you pull back, it's going to open up the carburetor. When you let off, it's going to pull back. So now what we need to do is hook up some way to return this back to home when you let off the gas. So that's where this spring is going to come in handy. This has got a pretty good amount of, uh, of pull to it. And those extra holes that we actually popped in there will work perfect to, uh, to use this spring for. That's why I always say you can do a general three of them and then you'll be pretty much set. Now what I normally do with this spring is on Predators, they're a lot easier than these Hondas because these Hondas have this little plastic trim ring under the pull start. Now, normally you have that open bolt hole up here. I just find a bolt that'll thread into it and make a little 90 that this spring will hook into and uh, basically hold tension so when you let off, you know, it'll pull back. And you can loosen this 10 millimeter nut up here on this throttle linkage setup to make this easier. This is kind of stiff because it wasn't meant to be used like that. I'm gonna take a 10 and see how much easier that is. Now, when we hook this spring up, it's gonna do a lot easier of a job of returning it back to home. So now what I did was I just hooked this return spring on this plastic ring, and you can see when we let off, it goes right back to home. So we're pretty much done. We can throw the gas tank back on this engine, and, uh, and if this was on a go-kart, we'd be ready to ride. Give you a more up-close look at this. Uh, you can see that's where I drilled those three holes and the hole I end up using was the one closest to the end Now you really need to play with this. There's no real uh, Written in stone way to bend these I can measure mine out and put it in the description below So you can bend yours exactly like I did and then I can measure from this end to where I drilled that hole and you know Put all that in the description below as I was saying if this is too too tight to return all you have to do is loosen up this 10 millimeter and that'll um, you know get make it freely move a lot easier this is tight from the factory because it's meant to just set it at a certain rpm and leave it for pressure washers and generators now there's that throttle hold down right here normally this thing would have some eyes up here and as well back here and another throttle hold down right there because you can run the cable in from here and bolt it down with one of these but like I said this is missing a lot of pieces off of it guys I uh, hope this helps out a lot of people I've gotten a lot of people asking me how to do this you just really need to bend the arm take a three thirty seconds drill bit and drill these holes so guys I hope you liked the video I had a lot of people asking me about this throttle linkage setup it's really easy once you do one or two it'll come natural to you and I will be putting in the description below those measurements how you can go ahead and pre-measure out your rod and mark it and do those bends but I do highly recommend you try before and after you know make sure everything's going to work out on your particular application you know so you don't waste that throttle rod this is going to work for Predator 212s GX 160s or 200s and the only thing it's going to differ on is when you go up to the big block engines. That would be a 301cc or a 420cc or the GX270, 340, and 390 engines, which I'll have a video in the next couple weeks coming out on how to do this same process on those engines. Guys, don't forget to go to Go Power Sports and check out all their awesome go-kart goodness and use that red beard code to save 10% on your purchase. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram where we're putting up-to-date pictures up. You'll get... Okay, you'll kind of know what videos are coming out before they ever come out and uh, get the inside scoop on all that's going on at Redbeard's Garage. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, guys. Share these videos to help us grow even bigger so we can bring more giveaways and more content to you guys. And uh, always come back to Redbeard's Garage. I'm out.